We're on the road in the monkey bus, driving at a leisurely pace. That's the only way we even have a chance of spotting wild Barbary macaques. Welsh woman Chian Waters and her team have been observing the lives of these threatened primates for several years, especially in the reef mountains in northern Morocco. In some places in Morocco, for instance in uh, the Middle Atlas, there, there is um, a research project going on there that looks particularly at the wild macaques' behaviour. So the macaques have been habituated specifically for that research. Here, for example, they are not habituated to people at all, they're afraid of people, and so when they see people, they run, so it's impossible to follow them. The habitat of the Barbary macaques is under threat. Deforestation is taking place in the reef mountains to clear the way for farmland. Boersham Forest is being affected too, as a new study shows. Where we are, it still looks intact. Sean Waters tells us the macaques can live relatively well here, so there's hope of spotting some. We've been traveling with the wildlife conservationists for four days now. This is a small, committed team of under 10 people. Mohamed Chidwan is one of them. He gets closest to the shy Barbary macaques. He often spends time here alone to observe them. He knows the forest inside out. He spent days and nights here and knows the places the macaques frequent. They live in groups that usually consist of 40 to 60 animals. They're hard to spot among the leaves and rocks. The macaques come along with me, so I'm never afraid at night, and in the morning I find them in front of me again. The same thing in the evening, till they go to sleep. We protect each other, like friends. For a long time, shepherds in the Boersham forest were no friends of the monkeys. They hunted them, sometimes to sell them. But a number of shepherds have been persuaded to stop. So now, often it's usually only their dogs that still hunt the monkeys. Yunus is one such shepherd. He stresses that his dogs are well behaved and just watch over his flocks. But he says that free roaming animals do sometimes attack the macaques and kill them. The next day, the weather's so ugly, it's pointless to look for Barbary macaques. So we visit the building the wildlife conservationists plan to expand into an education and conservation center. Inside, Shan shows us photographs documenting the illegal trade in Barbary macaques. Unfortunately, it's a very difficult situation. We have a problem with the animals being caught and captured from the Middle Atlas for the illegal pet trade. Mm. Uh, and also what happens is that some of them are caught and used as oh photo props. Mm. We already work with the forestry authorities to confiscate illegally held macaques. Some of those animals we, use, we look at very carefully to see if they can be released back into the wild. So if we could have some kind of building here, a, a very basic structure where we could assess their behaviour um, and their suitability for release, that would make life a lot easier for us, because at the moment we don't have that. We're in the village of Taliamin. A group of women has gathered around Ahmed El Harad. He's especially good at getting the villagers to understand the macaques. He supervises a touring exhibition that informs people about the threat to the monkeys. When they find a monkey at a site, for instance, they phone us quickly. Sometimes 20 different people phone. We've confiscated quite a number of animals simply because the exhibition has been so informative. Taliamin is a remote village in the Boersham forest. It's only been reachable by a dirt road for the last year and a half. Time seems almost to have stood still here, but the village is slowly changing. There's now a small center where women can learn reading and arithmetic, for instance, or knitting and sewing. 
Protecting the macaques is not a priority here. So Shan Waters proceeds carefully. She makes it clear that the villagers' needs will be taken into account. She not only explains why her team wants to protect the macaques, but also how it will benefit the residents of Taliamin. Ahmed translates. We need to understand how the people who share the uh, macaques' habitat or use the forest see the macaques, because they don't necessarily see them within as the same way as we do in, in, from, Euro from Europe. So, for example, they might not see them as interesting or beautiful in themselves. They may see them as an economic resource or a pest, for example. We still haven't given up hope of spotting wild Barbary macaques. The next day, we start off again. We meet Mohammed, who, as so often, is walking alone through the forest. He tells us he's seen two groups, one more nervous than the other. We try to find the calmer group. And we're in luck. 20 to 30 meters away from us, we discover one macaque after another. And we keep our distance so as not to scare them away. <laughs> Studies have shown that wild Barbary macaques are healthier and better able to reproduce than those that are accustomed to humans. So we don't stay for too long.